Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, um, I think I have five minutes to, to, to share with you a few thoughts. Um, I wouldn't call it a speech, I'd talk about a, a few basic statements. Um, and I'll start by uh, focusing on, you know, making sure we have our feet firmly grounded that we're going through a tough time. And I think progress needs to start by recognizing that the environment is going to be incredibly challenging over ne the next two, three, four, perhaps longer time frames. That there's going to be enormous re recessionary pressures. And it's difficult to talk about expansion and growth and development against the challenges we, we all face. I asked myself if I was here in, say, January, February 2014, when oil prices were $100 a barrel, would I be making different statements? And actually, I wouldn't. And so, notwithstanding the reality that it's really pretty starking, very, very concerning, my position doesn't change. The opportunity doesn't change. The challenges are somewhat greater, but actually, they, I, you know, they say, never waste a crisis. Seize the opportunity from difficulty. The GCC has struggled to diversify, and in the current environment, everyone, Oman and our neighbors, are really going through a tough time in terms of balancing budgets and balancing growth ambitions. But actually, this oil price collapse is potentially a blessing in disguise because it enables us to drive change where change is required. Now, when we talk about SMEs, it's always very difficult within the context of the oil and gas industry, which is a very capital-intensive industry, high risk, big bucks, relatively low employment in that sector. Um, but again, there remains many, many opportunities. And Suleiman highlighted some of the scope in terms of the uh, level of investment and therefore the rare level of potential opportunities emerging from that. I think it's important to start talking about, you know, what is, uh, what is success? At the moment, the continuing growth of the government sector, of the public sector, is simply unsustainable. So SMEs, globally, regionally, locally, will have been, will, and continue to be the growth engine, the employment engine. And I guess our first priority in terms of defining success is supporting Omani employment. The huge level of new job seekers coming onto the market every single year against an incredibly difficult environment. How do we address that? So in PDO, we see that as a, as a key priority. Of course, we deliver oil and gas, but employment, sustainability, productivity, competitiveness are key ingredients that will not only enable us to progress through these difficult times, but actually set the foundation for gradual capacity building and diversification. Today, we're very much linked to the oil industry. Uh, it's a comparative advantage, and so we should. But it's a very vertical business model from the upstream to the midstream to the downstream and so forth, and all relies on that oil price formula which is clearly challenged. So we need to move from that vertical model to a horizontal supply chain model that addresses not just the industry itself and the comparative advantage it has, but also the other sectors where there's enormous comparative advantage. Tourism, logistics, just to name a few. So definition of success, addressing the employment challenge, addressing the competitiveness, productivity, the shift of incentives, the shift of culture from the public to the private sector is going to be key. If you, you know, there's a lot of SMEs, I'm sure, in the room. There's a lot of SME ambitions. Typical requirements are seed funding, dedicated teams to assist, training, development, opportunity funnels, Simplification is a key driver. Simplification is so important. There's so much bureaucracy. There's established entrepreneurs in Oman, famous entrepreneurs that established big businesses that struggle to expand and very often say, well, it's just taken so long, I'm going to set up the next shop in, uh, workshop in, uh, in Jebel Ali or somewhere else. 
because it's so much easier. So that's an area where we've talked a lot about the one-stop shop, but we're not quite there yet. And so PDU are working hard to establish industrial zones in the interior where we will have one-stop shops to help our SMEs join and understand the opportunity sets. Simplification in registration. So we've worked very hard with the other operators and MOG to establish the JSRS system, the joint uh, registration system. So much simpler. Uh, companies no longer need to register with us and be audited by us and then do the same with BP or Oxy or Dalil and so many others. It's just one approach. That's one way of, of providing the enablers. But back on to PDO, I mean, uh, you know, our vision to be renowned and respected for the excellence of our people and the value we create to all our stakeholders. The key word is, is value, and that goes beyond oil and gas delivery. It is recognizing that if our communities in which we work don't succeed, we will not succeed. So what is the biggest challenge? It is employment, sustainable, productive, competitive employment, and that's what our entire focus is. And, you know, there's different definitions of SMEs, and uh, micro, medium, large. Ours tend to be larger sized SMEs, but there's enormous opportunity. PDO for the last 40 years has been focusing on supporting local community companies. Since 2011, when His, Majesty's call, His Majesty called for the National Objectives Program, we have stepped up that effort. Uh, we have a dedicated ICV team. As I've said before, it's a key priority in our business. It's not just a corporate social responsibility. It just makes good business sense. It's about aligning internal drivers, health, education, operational experience, and so forth, with external requirements. That's when you can make it sustainable, if you can secure that alignment. It's about working with academia to make sure that their massive effort on, on development, on growth, on human capital, focus is aligned with its industry needs. We still have a lot of diploma holders that come into PDO and have to be retrained for four years to get into the standards we need and seek. So massive effort, can we align that academic effort with industry requirements? And we have a lot of engagements on that front. LCCs, super LCCs. Today, super LCCs, we've established four companies. We're onto the fifth one, Alcazane now. They've got 9,385 shareholders, all from the interior community. They've got 650 Omanis. They've only been there two years. They're performing. Great HSE performance, great technical delivery, and they'll grow from there. So we can deliver success. And it's about dedicated teams, dedicated support, dedicated training, aligned visions, and it's amazing how much we can do together. So, you know, in, in this current environment, everyone, everyone is under, under pressure, budgetary pressures, cost reduction pressures. But for us, for us, it's business as usual. We've always tried to drive continuous business improvement. We've always tried to drive sustainability. I'm very confident that no matter what the oil price throws at us, we'll be able to deliver a robust program with key growth elements that enable us to provide significant support to SME ambitions we have in place. I can't comment on where the oil price will be two, three, four years from now, or whether we'll be experiencing additional pressures. But what I can say is that we have a robust development program. We have a strong portfolio. We have a high activity levels that will withstand any oil price you can throw at it. And therefore, we can sustain a lot of our ambitions in terms of delivering not just oil and gas targets, but also support to the community. A key effort, irrespective of all the acronyms I referred to, all the investments we put on, on uh, with locally registered companies, is sustainable long-term job creation. In 2011, we set a target to create 1,000 jobs outside of PDO. In the last three years, we've created 14,000 jobs through upskilling and development. Today, we have 200 uh, welders, 6G welders, that are going through their final graduation phase. One welder. Um, but a few months ago resigned. He went to Dubai, picked, bought a pickup truck and a welding machine, has gone back to his village and has, and has opened a welding shop. For us, that's success. That's sustainability, that's production capacity, that's opportunity. If we want to diversify, it's about doing, 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 
and moving on to the broader supply chains along, along the horizontal axis. And all the other sectors have got so much opportunity, not just the oil and gas. The, today, the focus, and I, I really want to thank Bank Muscat through the, the Smith Act program to enable this sort of engagement. But I think every single sector has enormous opportunity. We shouldn't spend a single base in the Oman Rail project until we've mapped out the, the human capital opportunity associated with that. There's so much scope, and that applies to every single sector. But it is about recognizing the challenge we face today and moving on and seizing opportunity to shift our culture from the public sector to the private sector and finding how we can simplify that enrollment, that engagement, that support for employment. We're targeting this year to create 7,000 jobs. And all I see is that we're well underway to achieving that. And we need to progress this next year and the year after that together. We need to leverage seed money because it's going to be constrained. Everyone's going to be under tight budgetary constraints. But we can deliver long-term sustainability. Thank you.